Welcome to the IT free training video on installing Active Directory Federation services on Windows Server 2008 R2. In a previous video, I installed and configured an Enterprise CA to provide a certificate for this server. Federation services needs a certificate in order to be installed, so you will need to have a certificate infrastructure on your network in order to perform the install. I will now change to my Windows Server 2008 R2 server in order to perform the install. The version of Active Directory Federation Services that I will install is version 2. The version that comes in Windows Server 2008 R2 is version 1, so I will need to download the newer version. To do this, I will open Internet Explorer from the Start menu. From Internet Explorer, I will open Google and then search for ADFS 2.0 RTW. RTW stands for Release to Web. You can see that the first result is the download for ADFS. If you have trouble finding this link, I have added it to the reference section in the description of this video. Once I press continue, I will be asked if I want to register with Microsoft. If you register, you will be kept up to date with new releases from Microsoft. In this case, I will leave it on the default option of, no, I do not want to register, take me to the download. On the next screen, I need to select which download I want. In this case, I will select the 64-bit version of Windows Server 2008 R2. Once selected, I will press the Continue button to start the download. I will save the download to the desktop. It is important to download and install this update. Otherwise, if you install the version found in Server Manager that was shipped with the operating system, this will install version 1.0. Once the download has completed, I will close Internet Explorer and then run it from the desktop. Once the install starts, I will move past the welcome screen and then, when asked, I will accept the license agreement and move on. On the next screen, I need to decide which component of Federation services I am installing. In this case, I will leave it on the default option of Federation Server. The second option, Federation Server Proxy, you would most likely install on your DMZ to allow access to the Federation Server from the Internet. On the next screen, I will be informed which additional software is required for the install. There is no need for the administrator to install this software, as the install will attempt to install itself if it is not present already. Once I press Next, the install will start. The process takes a few minutes to complete, so I'll pause the video and return shortly. Once the install has completed, I will untick the tick box, Start the ADFS Management Snap-In when the wizard closes. This option would open the Admin tool when I press Finish, but I would rather show you how to do this manually. To do this, I will press Finish, and then from the Start menu, select ADFS 2.0 Management under Administrative Tools. Once the tool has opened, I will select the option ADFS 2.0 Federation Server Configuration Wizard on the home page. This will launch the wizard that will allow me to configure the server. On the welcome screen of the wizard, I need to select the type of install I want to perform. The first option, Create a new Federation Server, will need to be selected if you do not have any Federation servers on the network already. The second option will add the server to an existing farm if one exists. In this case, I do not have an existing Federation Server farm, so I will leave it on the default option and move on to the next screen of the wizard. On the next screen, I need to decide if I want to create a new Federation Server farm or perform a standalone install. The default option, New Federation Server Farm, will create a new farm, which I can add additional servers to later on if I want to. The second option, Standalone Federation Server, will create a single Federation Server. Both options provide the same set of features. The standalone option is recommended for smaller or testing environments. If you are not sure, select the first option, New Federation Server Farm, as this gives you the most options later on. Once I move on to the next screen, I need to decide which certificate should be used. There is a certificate on this server already, but notice that it is grayed out as it is not compatible. I need to obtain a certificate that is compatible with Active Directory Federation Services. 
To do this, I will open the Start menu and then enter in MMC in the Run box. This will open Microsoft Management Console, which will allow me to add the certificate snap-in, which is not available in the Start menu as a shortcut. To add the snap-in, I will select File and then select Add Remove Snap-in. From the list, I need to select Certificates and then press Add. This will bring up another window which will allow me to decide which certificates that I want to manage. In this case, I will select the option Computer Account so that I can view the certificates that are used by the local computer. On the next screen, I need to decide which computer I want to view the certificates on. In this case, I will leave it on the default option of the local computer and then press Finish to complete the wizard. Now that the options have been configured, I will press OK and the snap-in will be added and ready to view the certificates on the local computer. By default, certificates will be shown in the Logical Certificate Stores view. I need to view certificates by their purpose. To change the view, select the View menu and then select Options. From the View Options, I will next tick the option Certificate Purpose and press OK. You can now see the view has changed, showing the certificates in a container based on their purpose. The certificate container that I am interested in is Server Authentication. The next step is to request a certificate to go into this container. To do this, I will right-click the container Server Authentication and then under All Tasks, I will select the option Request New Certificate. Once I am past the Welcome screen, on the next screen, I need to select how I will use Auto Enrollment to obtain a certificate. Auto Enrollment is when the certificate contacts the Enterprise CA and uses a secured channel to request and transfer the certificate to the local computer. In this case, I will leave it on the default option of Active Directory Enrollment Policy. This is the default policy in Windows which will attempt to contact an Enterprise CA in order to obtain a certificate. Once I press Next, I need to select which template I want to use to generate the certificate. In the previous video, I created a certificate template to use with Active Directory Federation Services. It is listed here, so I will select it and then press the Enroll button. The enrollment, as you can see, does not take too long to complete. Now that it is complete, I can close these windows, go back to the Configuration Wizard, and move on to the next screen, since I now have a valid certificate to use. On the next screen, the Configuration Wizard will detect that an ADFS database already exists. On this server, I installed ADFS version 1, so this database has been detected. Since I do not require that data, I will tick the option Delete Database to remove the existing data and then move on to the next screen of the wizard. On this screen, I need to select a service account to run Active Directory Federation Services with. I have already created a domain user in the domain to use as the service account. To select that account, all I need to do is press Browse and type in the name of the account. The user account has been added. However, since it is only a domain user, it will not have enough access to run Active Directory Federation Services and it needs to be added to the Local Administrators group. To do this, I will open the Start menu and then select Computer Management under Administrative Tools. Once open, I will expand down to Groups under Local Users and Groups and then right-click on Administrators and select the option Add to Group. To add the service account, I will press the Add button and then enter in the name of the service account. You will notice that the service account has now been added to the Administrators group. Once I go back to the wizard, all I need to do is enter in the password and move on to the next screen. The next screen shows a summary of the configuration. Once I press Next, the server will be configured for use with Active Directory Federation Services. The process takes a few minutes to complete, so I will pause the video and return shortly. Notice that one of the steps has completed with a warning. If I select the warning, you see that this refers to the SPN of the service account not being able to be configured. This was configured when I created the user account. 
Setup will not change it if it has already been configured. If you need to change it, you can open the properties of the user account and change it there. I will now close the wizard and you can see that the configuration of the server is now complete. In later videos, I will look at how to start using Active Directory Federation services now that it has been installed and configured. Until then, I would like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you in those videos.